Grid cells are a type of brain cell, and first of all they were discovered in rodents, but now we know they exist in uh, mammals in general. And they seem to be very important for sort of measuring out space. A good analogy is that they're like uh, the grid lines on a map, except on a map we've used square grid lines and the brain's using hexagonal grid lines and you have small scale grid lines and larger scale grid lines. Originally people used to think they were very important for something we call path integration, which is basically updating where you think you are based on how you're moving. So I know where I am right now, and if I move at 10 meters, then I end up somewhere over there. But actually we're moving beyond that now. While we still think path integration is important, focusing on the fact that we believe they function like a map, they sort of relate one place to another. They also seem to be very important for planning routes. So if you want to know the shortest route between here and somewhere else that you've visited, then the grid lines will provide you with something we call a vector-based navigation and allow you to calculate the direct line distance. With the recent paper, we were trying to do several things. So first of all, we were trying to test this idea of vector-based navigation. So are grid cells really the, uh, the substrate, the machinery that allows you to sort of calculate these direct line routes between places? But equally, we were trying to do something a little bit more than that. We were trying to see if you could take what we know about how the mammalian brain works and incorporate it into artificial agents to improve the way that they work, in this case, the way they navigate. First of all, we were able to show that if we train an agent or a network to uh, path integrate, then we found that actually it developed grid cells. So this is a remarkable convergence of form in that they looked like grid cells in the mammalian brain. They had the same hexagonal pattern with sort of tightly tessellated fields. And then we were able to take that network and transfer it into a larger network uh, that was now controlling an agent navigating around and that agent was then able to navigate flexibly in demanding virtual environments. And so, for example, one of the tests that we wanted to see whether it could do is whether it could take shortcuts. We had environments that would change while the agent was in there, so it might find one long route to the goal, but then a new door would open up presenting a shortcut. And so the agent with grid cells could utilise that shortcut and go straight through to the goal. So this is important for several reasons. We've confirmed that grid cells are important for vector-based navigations. We've shown that we can use an artificial network to conduct neuroscience experiments. Um, but also we've shown that incorporating what we know about how the brain solves a problem into an artificial network can provide that network with abilities that it wouldn't have otherwise have had.